Welcome back, everyone. Welcome back to my math channel online today again. In this video today, I would like to follow up with the lesson about the polynomial function in the course of pre-calculus math 12. So the lesson today, we will learn about the synthetic division. Before I get into the lesson, let me ask you just a simple question and it should come up to my mind. So I would like to share with my audience. And if you know the answer, just please um, put your comment if you watch my video. Usually in math language, we, in any subject, we always tend to teach from symbol to complex. It's especially math is a very tough topic, and that's for sure, def uh, definitely. But sometimes I wonder, um, the mathematics language have some reverse steps, such that in the first introduction to calculate course, we learn the hard lesson about the limit with the abstract concept first. And that concept seems to be abstract to all of us before we can use the formula in derivative using the derivative formula and perform differentiation in a very such easy way. So as long as we pass that abstract concept for the first lesson in calculus about the limits, then it seems to be okay. Again, like the same for the elementary student, usually we are we were teaching um, we, 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 we are teaching the, the kids in the elementary school that using the long division by hand. Um, and that I show you before I get into this polynomial division, right? Um, and it seems to be the hard task for on, even though to the adults, um, rather than just knowing what division mean and then use a calculator. But usually we we didn't we, we don't now some teacher might but we encourage the kids to learn by hand to how to divide the number first and it's amazing that I found during my thirteen years of teaching experience any student have memorized the routine traditional root of the multiplication table perform very well on the other lesson later on in math 10, factor the equation, because they have a number set in their mind. Rather than like students who have no clues about how to divide by hand the long division and um, the multiplication table. So that's the question for you. Now, the reason I was talking about that because our topic going backward today, we will learn the synthetic division in such an easy way rather than the long division before. So sometimes in math, we go backward. We learn the complex first, and then we go back to the similar. So I hope that if you feel obstacle in math, just say, oh, as long as I'm going to pass this hard lesson, I'm going to be OK for the next lesson. So stay tuned for that. Don't give up. <laughs> Okay, let me get into the the in the question. Um, this is the um, expression, which is let me start fresh first. Sorry about that. So on the board, I have an expression minus eleven x to the power three plus six x to the power four plus five minus x to the power five. So to, to be able to perform the synthetic division, um, I will have to rearrange this, uh, um, this power in the descending order from the highest power to the lowest power. So I'm going to rearrange this algebra. That's my first step. So I look at it and I say, x to the power five is the highest power. So I'm going to put it down, minus x to the power five. What is the next one? Will be plus six x to the power four. So plus six x to the power four, then minus eleven x to the power three. 
And the next one is supposed to be x squared, right? Because we go from 5, 4, 3, then the next level will be number 2, power, power 2 or uh, square. Unfortunately, we don't have it in here. So what we do, we say, we're gonna add a zero x to the power square, pretend that it's there, but it's not there. And therefore we put a zero. What next will be x to the power one? Again, we don't have any number x to the power one, so I'm gonna add a zero for x to the power one as well. And the last term is a constant for sure, will be plus five. So that's the way I rearrange the expression in the descending order from the highest power to the lowest power. Now, the next task will figure out if x plus one, let's say we divide by x plus one, right? So we assume that x plus one multiply with the quotient, adding with the remainder will be equal back into the original expression. So therefore, we set x plus 1 equals 0 and we solve for x. And to do that, x will be equal to minus 1, right? Because minus 1 at 1 here equals 0. So the x here have to be equal to minus 1. So we know from this divisor, we know x equal to minus 1. So we will establish the way like we do long division. However, the long division and synthetic division is opposite, right? So we're going to, so in long division, we have to record the x and the power as well, just like the algebra expression from the original. In synthetic division, the easy task that you can pretend that the x is not there. So you just record, you just write out the coefficient in front of the letter x. And you don't have to write the whole x. Let's see how I do it. So I'm going to put here is minus one with tau cop copying down um, the x, right? Just minus one. So just minus one. And the next will be just six, right? Uh, instead of six x to the power four, I omitted just six. Next will be minus 11. Next will be zero. Next will be zero. And next will be five. And that's how I record the coefficient number. This number in front x we kind of call coefficient, coefficient. So we just record the coefficient number in front of the x. So this is how I record. Now I'm going to do the opposite turn upside down at the long division table. This is the side for synthetic division. So you see that we upside down, right? We turn it over. Everything will be opposite between long division and synthetic division. This is the way we draw. I'm going to record minus one in here as the divisor, right? Minus one. I'm going to bring this down exactly the same minus one. Now, the same like long division, you have to time the quotient with the divisor, right? So minus one times minus one will be positive one. Now we'll add this. Now in long division, you subtract, right? You subtract between them. In here, we add the opposite with the long division. Just remember everything in synthetic is opposite, right? So, so instead of subtract between these two, we add them. So six plus one is seven. Now seven times minus one is minus seven. We add them together. We get minus 18 down here. Minus 18 times with minus one will be minus 18. Actually positive 18, right? Negative times negative is positive. When we add them will become positive 18. 18 times with minus one is minus 18. So we're gonna add them again, we get minus 18 again. Minus 18 times minus one is positive 18 again. So five and 18 is 23. Noticing that all of this number, right? All of this number represent the quotient. 
which is the answer, right? And this last number represents the remainder number. So I'm going to write down the answer. And when I write down the answer, right, for the quotient, I am going to put the x back to the original because we still have an x there. It's just like we return not there. So we do it more lean cut and similar, but they still there. They not disappear, right? So now we put it back. So minus one, now when you put it back, notice five, one more thing I want to mention, right? We divide the highest power is x to the power five. If we divide by x to the power one, so we go down one level, right? Because the x to the power five divided by x to the power one equal x to the power four. So therefore, this number represents minus x to the power four and plus seven x to the power three to follow the descending order, right? Minus 18 x to the power square plus 18 x and minus 18. And of course, we plus with the remainder, right? Our remainder is 23. To notify this is the remainder, right? So now I am going to write out the answer, right? I'm going to say if this divide by this, then equal this, right? This is what we get. So I'm going to, because this is the first question, so I would like to make it clear to all of you. So minus 11, I'm going to copy exactly the same thing like original question, right? 6x to the power 4 plus 5 minus x to the power 5. And I'm going to put in bracket, divide by, this in bracket, x plus 1. This performance, like this operation, will give us the answer as this, right? So it will be equal to x to the power 4 and should be minus the 7x to the power 3 minus 18x squared plus 18x minus 18. And remember, we talked about the long division before. Um, divide and divide by divide. When we divide number, let's say if you have 30, you divide it by two, right? You get the, the answer here is six. Six times two is 12. You subtract, you get one. So this one is the remainder, right? It means that 13 here, the dividend here will be equal to 6 times 2, which is divisor, right? Divisor times with the divisor times with the quotient. And you're left with the one remainder. So we add back to 1. So 13 equal 2 times 6 at 1. So basically, that's what it means in division, right? So now, based on this understanding from elementary, we're going to establish our statement uh, regarding the algebra, just to make it clear, right? So I'm going to, based on this understanding, I'm going to write now the statement. Our dividend is the original one here, right? We call it dividend, so I'm copy it down. So number one, so the answer for number one is, right, I'm going to put in the answer. And so for number one is minus 11x to power 3 plus 6x to power 4 plus 5 minus x to power 5 divide by x plus 1, right? This whole division here will be equal to the quotient here which is minus x4 plus 7x to the power 3, right? Minus 18x squared plus 18x minus 18. So the dividend divided by divisor equal the quotient 
You see the quotient, right? The quotient time with divisor, which is x minus x plus one, right? X plus one. Adding back to the remainder, which is 23. So this is the answer. This divide by this equal the whole thing here, quotient time with divisor, adding with the remainder. So that's how we should understand about the polynomial division. So our next task, now one question is not going to be okay, right? Um, our next task will be continue with the synthetic division to the second question. Let me continue to show you how we do the synthetic division for the next question. So I'm going to do exactly the way I do here. It means I'm going to rearrange this question in the descending order to make sure I don't miss any term or I don't um, mess them up, right? So we have highest is 5x to the power 4. I'm going to put it here. Uh, and then plus 12x to the power 3. So plus 12x to the power 3 and minus 21x to the power square and minus 40x and minus 12 is the last term. Now make sure I don't miss any. I'm going to count it, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I don't miss any. That's fine. So now I'm going to record this number in front of the x with tau putting the x down, right? So that's the first step. So I'm going to put uh, 5, 12, and minus 21, and minus 40, and minus 12. I'm going to put the side upside down to to the side of the long division, right? So it's going to be like this. Um, I'm going to solve for x in here. I'm going to set x plus 3 equals 0 to solve for x, x equal minus 3, right? And look at here, I know x equal minus 3. So I'm going to put the minus 3 in here as the divisor, right? So now, mm -hmm. yeah. So now I'm going to bring the phi down exactly the way it is, phi. The quotient here with time with divisor, just like long division, right? Phi times minus 3 is 15, and it should be minus 15. Now, instead of subtract between them, I'm going to add them because we do the opposite with the synthet um, synthetic opposite with the long division, right? So in long division, you subtract between this term, but here we add it between this term. So minus 15 add to 12 will be minus 3. Minus 3 times minus 3 again will give us positive 9. Minus 21 add positive 9 is minus 12. Minus 12 times minus 3 is plus 26. Uh, sorry, 36, right? Yes, 36. So add them, minus 40 at 36, we got minus 4. Minus 4 times minus 3 is plus 12. So now I'm going to add this last term, and minus 12 plus 12 is 0. So we got 0 remainder. So Fortunately, in our division, in synthetic division for the second table, we get the um, zero remainder. So that's it neat, right? Um, now, remember, all of this is represent for our quotient, right? And we have zero remainder. So now let's record our quotient. This will stand for, now we have, highest power is x to the power 4, divided by x to the power 1, so go down to x to the power 3. So this is like 5x to the power 3 minus 3x three squared minus 12x and minus 4. So after we divide out by one level, one factor, we get the answer like this. 
and we don't have to put in this one, right? Because we have zero remainder. But our task is not complete because we have still have a bunch of them very long, right? We want to try to divide out as much as we can, unless we cannot, right? Now, in the first example, it seems that it's very complex, so I'm not going to show you how to divide down. But this one, I'm going to show you how we keep going, right? How we're going to keep dividing it out. Now, anytime you have an algebra expression, right? You can factor them, right? You can factor them out. If the expression is factorable, now sometimes the expression cannot factorable, then you have no choice. But usually we try to factor if it is factorable. And the way we test it to see if it's factorable or not, we put a number of x, the value of x in there. Let x equal one or let's, let x equal minus one. And we put in the expression and we calculate it out. If it is equal zero, then that number is a factor of that algebra. So let's try to do that. So I'm going to say, maybe I can put the positive one in here and I calculate it to see if this expression becomes zero or not. Or maybe I can put, I can try x equal two, or maybe x equal three. Now, of course, we start with the sim, sim, simple number first, right? Which is plus one. If plus one doesn't work out, you can try the minus one. Minus one doesn't work out, you try minus two or plus two, right? Now, I know the factor of four. The factor of four here can be one, can be two, can be four, right? <coughs> so I'm going to try to see if the factor here, any of this, and they both positive negative number, right? If they work out to make this depression become zero. So let's try if x equal minus one first. Okay, so I'm going to put in here and say if x equal minus one, what happened? We have five times minus one to power three minus three times minus one to square, minus 12 times minus one, minus four, is that equal zero? This will give me minus five, right? Uh, this will give me negative three, and this will give me a positive 12, because negative times negative positive, and this give me minus four. So minus three at minus three is minus eight, Minus eight at minus four is minus 12. Minus 12 plus 12 equals zero. Yes. So by inspection like this, I put in the value of x and I know if x equal minus one, then this expression will be factorable and become zero. So basically, if x equal minus one, when you put in the factor, you twist the side, right? It means x plus one is a factor. Is a factor of this algebra expression. So now we know that this long expression here can be continued to divide by this factor again. So why don't you try another synthetic division, right? Using take advantage of this factor. So I'm going to do synthetic division. Okay. So our synthetic division will be on this, right? Expression. We go divide out by x plus one again. So I'm going to record with tau the coefficient, right? So I have phi minus three minus twelve and minus four. So now this one will be continued to divide by x equal minus one. So I put minus one in here. Five, I'm going to read it out, right? First number, five times minus one is minus five. Add them together, minus three, add minus five is minus eight. 
minus eight minus one is positive eight. Positive eight add to minus twelve will be minus four. Minus four times minus one is positive four. Minus four add positive four is zero. So yes, we do have a zero remainder. At this point, I still have this going on, right? So I have to borrow some of the part here. So I'm going to erase this. To we'll continue with this lesson. So here I can record this is my 5x squared, right? We have an x to the power 3 divided out by one level and it becomes x squared minus ax minus 4. So I'm going to record that one in here. We have 5x squared minus 8x minus 4. Should I use the synthetic division again? Why not? I still can do it, right? However, we learned how to factor this algebra equation in quadratic equation before in my 10 already. So why not doing that here? To see if this is factorable or not. So we continue to factor down this expression, right? So the way I do, I'm going to split this number equal 5 times 1. I'm going to put in here 5 times 1 at the side work, right? At the side of work outside. I'm going to split this become 2 times 2. So 2 times 2. Um, Okay, two times two. So now I'm going to see if I be able to manipulate to get back into the midterm of this. If I can do the midterm, then that's my factor. But if I cannot do, then I have to try another one. Okay, so five times two is 10, one times two is two. I'm going to do cross multiply, right? Five times two is 10. 1 times 2 is 2. That's how I do it. Now I'm going to add these two numbers. If I add them and I get minus a, then that's correct factor. I can use it. Otherwise, I have to try another way. So now 10. So I'm going to assign the correct sign for them to make sure I get back to the midterm, right? If I add these two numbers. So this is two number here, down here. It's just for, for testing, right? for testing. So it means that I have to have a negative 10, add to the two, then I will get negative eight. If I don't assign the correct sign, then I'm not gonna get minus eight, right? To get minus eight, when I add this number, I have to assign the correct sign, the correct sign for number 10 and the correct sign for number two which is positive two and negative 10, will add up become minus eight. So now I know the size is correct. I'm gonna circle on the first one. I'm gonna circle on the second one. Now I'm gonna ignore the testing down here, right? These are the two numbers supposed to go to the bracket to factor this out, right? To make this factor equal zero. So now I'm gonna put in here, First bracket, factor algebra equation. So this is just the review lesson for my 10, right? I, I'm doing it again step by step, but um, you already passed this. If you in my 12 course, you know how to factor. Now, some people will have a different way of factoring the algebra equation. This is my way, so I show you. Now, my way, usually I think that is this, bias, right? Is the best way. <laughs> <laughs> I just think it's short, right? And whatever I make math short, then I think that's the better, okay? So for testing, uh, this is how I do. So, so factor means you break up, become two bracket. The number five go in here. And I know I have to have an X so that I can type with an X here to make an X square, right? So number five go in here. Number two going here, aside the correct side. This is plus two, right? This is plus two. And next one will be one x going here and minus 
right? I'm going to pick up the correct side down here, so minor, and the middle will hit. So the first circle will represent the first bracket, and that's why I circle it, right? The second circle will represent the second bracket. And of course, when you factor them out, you multiply them back. They should be get back the same expression. That's how you factor algebra, right? And I don't want to bother to do that because I know that my factor is correct, okay? So this is the expression. This is how you factor. So now I'm going to test the last number. Plus two times minus two is minus four. So I'm safe, I'm okay, okay? So this is correct. Now, I am going to put back our uh, answer. If we have the original like this, device x plus three, then what is the answer? What is our answer? That's important as well. I'm gonna do that step, step here, okay? So I'm gonna say answer. Okay, we have minus 21 x squared plus 5 x4. I'm going to just put the original, right? Minus 12 minus 40 x plus 12 x to power 3 divide by, so this is in bracket, by x plus 3. Actually, let me. Yeah, that's okay. Divide by x plus three, right? Okay, so let me erase this so that you don't feel is look disorganized, right? So this is just the side work, so I'm gonna erase as well. So divide it by x plus three. That's the original question, right? What is our answer? Now we go through a long process, and that's why I'm going to show you the answer, right? The answer will be the whole expression here can be factored out by the first one is x plus 3 equal x plus 3. Time width. So the first, right? Remember the quotient multiply with divisor equal the dividend, right? So the first answer will be x plus 3 from here. And the next will be time with x plus 1. And the next will be this two bracket. Time with 5x plus 2. Time with x minus 2. And after performing the synthetic division, we get the answer like this. And lean cut without the remainder because this expression divided by this one will give us this bracket. First factor from here, multiply with second factor from here, multiply with the third factor from here and the last factor from here. So that is how we divide using the synthetic. And based on this two example, I show you. I hope that you enjoy the lesson today, the video lesson today, and stay tuned for our next lesson. I cannot wait until I show you how to um, do the logarithmic function. That is the top function and the trigonometric function as well. But I found it more fun doing the logarithmic function. So stay tuned for our next unit, which is logarithmic function. But I haven't uh, done yet. We will have to go to more unit lesson about the uh, factor theorem we haven't learned, right? Today, I just show you the synthetic division. Our next lesson will be factor theorem in the unit of polynomial function. Oh, math 12 pre-calculus. Thank you for watching my audience and bye for now.